summer 1922. My wife and I were on holiday, driving over Dartmoor. For me, it was a secret pilgrimage. Shan't be long. Have a nice walk here. Get the picnic ready. It was as though everything had been waiting for my return. But what did I hope to find after all these years? Happy memories? Or some sort of forgiveness? As I hesitated, torn between fear and longing, the memories began to live again. My dear Frank, what do you know about women who go on the head of a pin? What is this love you talk about, anyway? Where else do you feel it? That's what I want to know. Where else does it strike you, eh? I'll tell you where. That's where it gets you. Not in the head, not in the heart. Right between the legs. Sounds uncomfortable. Oh, wake up, man. Do you remember that girl in the tobacconist? The one around the back of Balliol? No, I, I can't say I do. What a body. By Jove, what a body. It took me four weeks and about ten pounds of backy to get into a punt. But by God, it was worth it. <laughs> Hand over the map, would you? What was her name, by the way? Whose name? The girl in the tobacconist. I don't know. Elsie? Betty? Joan? What the devil does it matter what her name was? It should be a footpath to Widdicombe somewhere around here. Anyway, a rose by any other name and all that. Yes, here we are. If you take that track through the gate and across the field... Well, let's get going. I'd have thought you'd have known your Shakespeare. <laughs> Dare you? And doesn't it open? A pint of best for the next inn we come to. <laughs> Not the cleanest bolt I ever saw, but you got over it. What do you say, making a pint each, eh? Come on, boy, don't just sit there. I say, you're right. <laughs> Damned ankle. I twisted it somehow. Well, let's have a look. <laughs> no, it's not broken. Slight sprain, maybe? The bloody silly thing to do. Now, you sit there. I'll scout around a bit. There must be a farm somewhere nearby. <laughs> we haven't passed one for ten miles. <laughs> oh, look, there's a girl. Perhaps she can help. Hello there. You, miss. Is there a farm around here? Somewhere we can stay? My friend's hurt his leg. Do you live nearby? Down there with my eyes. Would she put us up for the night? Splendid. We were hoping to get to Whittacombe, but he can't walk, I'm afraid. Bit of luck, old chap. This young lady says her aunt will put us up for the night. She says it's only a step. You think you can manage it? Yes. Yes, I'm sure I can. Not far now. See how she walks. Beautiful. This might be quite interesting. What the devil do you mean by that? Ooh, a little game in the hayloft after a slice of auntie's rabbit pie and a flagon or two of cider. How would that appeal to you, eh? For God's sake, Garton. She probably can't even spell her own name. What the devil does that matter? Miss! What's your name, my girl? Megan David, sir. I'm Mr. Garton. This is Mr. Ashton. I'm a doctor. Mr. Ashton's a poet. Yes, sir. That's why he can't jump gates. <laughs> yes, sir. Good boy. I'll run on and tell Aunt Uriah. Thank you, Miss David. Afternoon. Afternoon. How the hell did you have to say I was a poet? Thanks for letting you bit. Like hell, if you want to know. <laughs> Auntie! <laughs> Auntie! I say, it's rather pretty. Hey, but they, Joe! Yeah, who is it? Who is it? Oh, I don't know. Strangers. Good 
afternoon, sir. You must be Megan's auntie. That's right. I've only got the one room. Oh, that'll suit us very well. I let it by the week in summer, otherwise it's two shillings a day, full board. Splendid. Megan, make the gentleman some tea and get the spare room ready. Good afternoon. Afternoon, sir. Joe, draw some water. You'll be wanting a wash. Oh, I could do with rather more than a wash myself. If it's a swim you're after, there's a pool down in the bottom of the meadow. Well, it's not very deep. That's fine for Nick and Rick. Well, I'll try it. You stay here and rest up. No, no, I'll, I'll come with you. What are you two staring at? Oh, and then take the gentleman's knapsacks and make yourselves useful. Thank you, boy. Oh! Oh! Come on, in. This will be a power of good. Oh. Oh. I wonder if a girl ever comes here for a dip. Oh. Leave her alone, can't you? What? I said leave her alone. Why? Because you've got a filthy mind. You ever seen a couple of Nancys before, Meg? Joan Narrican. They're gentlemen. But of course you wouldn't know about that. Kiss a kiss, then. Oh, you stink, Joan Narrican. You really do. A washwoman do you know I'm neither. <laughs> no, Joe, you really do smell horrible. Don't get up! There's plenty more if you're hungry. Thank you. Thanks very much, Megan. If you want anything else, I'll be in the kitchen. Oh, why don't you stand and talk to us? Well, Auntie will be wanting me, sir. Oh, come on, just for a minute. Wow. Does your uncle own this farm, then? My uncle? Only I mean, Mr. Narrican. Not he died years ago. So you've been brought up here with your cousins? No, sir. Joe and the boys, they're not my kin, see. Auntie, that's Mrs. Narrican. She took me in when my mum died. But what about your father? Surely he... I don't know. He wasn't from these parts. Welsh, was he? You have a Welsh name. Can I go now, sir? Of course. We shouldn't be keeping you like this. Excuse me, sir. If you don't mind my saying... Your friend being a doctor and all, you ought to put a poultice on that ankle. Well, I know how to do it. Cured Nick's legs something wonderful when he fell off the hay wagon. Thank you. I'll certainly give it a try. Thank you, sir. She's rather intriguing. Did you see how prettily she blushes? I knew she wasn't just a farm girl the minute I saw her. What's your opinion? Her manners are better than yours. Beyond that, I, I have no opinion. You know, I don't think this ankle's going to be better by tomorrow. It's swelling up like blazes. Well, let's stay here for a couple of days. Rest it up. Meg, where they come from? London, I suppose. Oh, a long way. A thousand miles? Mm. Most likely a thousand miles. <laughs> nine o'clock. Who the Dickens goes to bed at nine o'clock? No. Joe told me the nearest pub is ten miles away. It's absolutely barbaric. No wonder these peasants are so inbred. Dad, what are they keeping there? Dad, Pigs, probably. <laughs> get off. Let get off. go! Get oh, no, off. please. Stop <laughs> <laughs> well, I got them anyway. Joke about that bogle, or he'll come and get you one of these nights. Oh, oh, stop it! Stop it! Legs are in the bogle! Legs are in the bogle! I'll be just tapping the gentleman. Joe says 
can't see. And what does Joe know? Mangle, wurzels and turnips. That's what Joe knows. Joe said he saw them in the pool, stark naked. <laughs> now don't gabble. God won't hear a word you say if you gabble. You know, old chap, I'm not sure I can actually stand it here, in spite of the attractions. What? I might push back to town in the morning. If I can find a railway station in this godforsaken place. Well, there's one at Bovey Tracy, I think. Are you sure you don't mind? Like, you'll be all right. Yes. Well, I'll be all right. Splendid! I hope this won't hurt you, sir. What's in it? That stuff you're putting on. Just a bit of this and that. You wouldn't know if I told you. It's soothing. It's very soothing. I'm afraid Mr. Garton wouldn't approve, though. <laughs> what did you think of him? He seemed in a great hurry to be gone this morning. He was funny, though. Funny? Well, when I gave him his breakfast this morning, he said I was a daughter of the Bards. <sighs> Is it true, sir, that... That you're a poet. <laughs> Not really. I just write poetry from time to time. Actually, I'm a barrister. That's a lawyer, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> What's so funny about that? Well, you're much too young to be a lawyer. I'm sorry, sir. Best get you a slipper. I'll never get your shoe on over that. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. You'll be leaving today, then? Well, actually, I've asked your mother whether I can stay on for a few days. It's a good idea to rest it, don't you think? Oh, uh, we don't rest much in these parts. Not for a bit of bruise, anyhow. I've got it! No, it's all right, Miss David, I can do that. No, no, I oh, can. Oh. Miss David, is it now? You've gone up in the world, haven't you, Meg? Mind your own business. You can walk a bit now, sir. Thank you. It's the most kind. Come on, then, Miss David. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but Auntie says, would you like to try a bit of a caraway cake? Oh, that's very kind. Oh. <laughs> um. Where is everybody? I mean, where do you sit in the evening? In the kitchen, sir. Could I come in for a while? It's a bit lonely in here. 
Do you want to bring your cake, then? Are you all right? Let me help you, sir. I'm sorry. I feel so stupid. Yes. Just put your arms around my shoulders, sir. It'll have got stiff just sitting about. You don't have to call me sir. Well, what shall I call you, then, sir? Well, Mr Ashton will do. My name's Frank. Very well. Mr. Ashton. Mind your head. Oh, I don't want to damage that at all. Oh, no, you never saw no dragon. Oh, yes, I did. I sliced his head off and all his gas can spit it out. Oh, right, and then you woke up. <laughs> He's a liar. Oh, you. <laughs> all right. I asked Megan whether I could join you for a few minutes. I hope you don't mind. Of course, sir. Take this chair by the fire. We're just finishing supper. Boys, help Mr. Ashton, can't you? Honestly, I can manage. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Please carry on. I really don't want to disturb you. Megan, fetch Mr. Ashton a glass of the elderberry. This is Jim. Who's it? He's out coming. Hello. Mm. My young Rick was just saying he'd met a dragon this morning. A dragon? Good heavens, where? Up in Cranberry Woods. I did, I did. You got no dragons in London, I suppose. Oh, plenty. Of a sort. Not the kind Rick means, I'm sure. Mm. Your cake is delicious. I'm sure my mother would like the recipe. Go on. What is made of? It's not written down, sir. Never has been. Like, how to jump gates. That's not been written down either, has it, eh? Hey. <laughs> the wine's very good, too. Megan, she makes it. Put something in it, don't you, Meg? Well, here's to whatever it is. I suppose that's a secret, too. Oh, I see my witches, old Megan. Joe, stop it. Boys, blades then. What's going to you? Nothing. Oh, yes, there is. No, nothing. Give us a kiss then. boys. Up to bed with you now. But it's Saturday tomorrow, man. And you'll be up all hours. Now, upstairs, right now. Catch me! Oh, oh. I'll catch you at the end of my broom, I will. I can skin frogs, can you? <laughs> and I can skin you, Richard Narrican. Upstairs! Oh, oh. Well, I'll just do the dishes if you don't mind, sir. Oh, of course. Do carry on. I'm sorry. If I intruded. Megan. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How's your ankle today? It's getting better. Still painful, though. So, when do you think you'll be going? 
Well, if you could possibly put up with me for a few more days, if it's not too much trouble. Of course, no trouble. Sam turns. Of course. You know, it's in quiet for you today. Megan's taking the boys over to her friend Betsy's to see the shearing. Oh, so that's today. I don't like it, mine. Still, I suppose we must change with the times. And Joe, has he gone too? Joe's working. Morning, Jen. Morning, sir. Uh, how far is Beaches Farm from here? Beaches? That's about four miles, sir, straight up the road there. Keep right by the high rocks. You'll be wanting to see the shearing, I reckon. Four miles. See your legs better, sir. My leg? Oh, my, my ankle. Yes, it's fine. Thank you. Could I borrow a, a trap, a, a horse? Well, there's Meg's old bicycle in the shed there, if you can ride that. Thank you. That'll do very well. She's right willful as our Meg when she's a mind to it. Ah, really? Farmer Narrakam wouldn't have let the boys go over to Beecher's. <laughs> Farmer Narragum, he didn't speak one word to Farmer Beecher in nigh on ten years. <laughs> Proper feud they had. So Joe doesn't go to the shearing? No, no. He's mighty stubborn, is Joe. But Megan will win him round. You'll see. Yes, well, uh, right at the high rocks, you say? That's it, sir, over the moor. Thank you, Jim. That is pure as an angel and fair as the flowers of May. They call her the gentle maiden wherever she takes her way. Her eyes have the glance of sunlight as it brightens the blue sea waves. <laughs> Frank Ashton. He's just come to stay with us for a bit. That's where he's gone. What do they do? Have you seen the sheep? Well, of course I've seen them. <laughs> <laughs> the Sheeran's near. Are you going to show me round, Nick? Hi, oh, Sheeran. I'll oh, show you. It's fascinating. Do they ever cut them? No, not really. Well, if they... look, there's one there. She's been cut. They just cover them with tar seed and it keeps them clean. Come on, Blondie, you can have a go. Hear that? Let me go back second up. There it is, Eddie. You reckon it's your boyfriend? Yeah. Like this? Let me go back. 
a throw, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on, Bess. He probably won't notice anyway. Oh, yes, he will. <laughs> In the kitchen, I know. <laughs> Look at him. He's got the biggest. Don't stop your face. Oh, Megan, we're joined in One some more. You know what the time is? Nope. It's one o'clock. How do you get home? I'll come in the trap with you. Oh, no, you can't. We're stopping over. The boys have been in bed long since. Easy. I'll stay too. Oh, no, you can't. I've got the house full. I could sleep on the wall. Well, I'll get you a blanket. You'll be strong cold. No, I won't. Megan, in the morning, you better meet me somewhere or else they'll think... It's been the most marvellous day of my life. Thank you. Yes. You've done all right in the dancing. I won't come back inside. Tell the others that I've gone. Megan. Yes, sir. Mm, nothing. Good night.
Come. It wasn't for the blanket. Why? Because I love you, Miss Trashton. Too tipsy to ride your bike. So where did I sleep? In the ditch. <laughs> well, what if they don't believe me? The boys will tell your aunt. Oh no, they won't. Nick wants a new knife, and Rick's after new flies for his rod. Megan, you're wicked. Chester House in Chelsea. It's not much bigger than yours. Have you got servants? A few. Gate somebody. I'll do it. Auntie and Joe's gone to church, most likely. What about you, Megan? Don't you go to church? Meg's afraid of parson. <laughs> no, I'm not. I just don't like the way he looks at me. He's bad, always on about sin and damnation and such. Oh, 
Don't you believe in sin, then? No. Why should I? Tonight. Where? By the river. Will you come? met a lady in the Mees, full beautiful, a fairest child. Her hair was long, her foot was light, and her eyes were wild. She found me roots of relish sweet, and honey wild, and manna dew. And sure, in language strange, she said, I love thee true. Blows for. We're not having company, are we? Well, I just feel like it, that's all. Oh, she just feels like it. How about feeling like a walk then? Well, I'm feeling like something too. Something's not right. Dancing all night at beaches, up on the hill reading poetry. Something's not right. It's time me and you name the day. Meg, cat got your tongue? I live here, don't I? What's the difference? <laughs> What's the difference, she says? Now, Joe. She been on a farm all her life and she says, What's the difference? I'll tell you the difference, girl. Me and you, stuck in the big four poster, cuddling up a night when the wind owls. A babe in your arms. And a few more round your skirts, I shouldn't wonder. Mrs. Joan Arakum, you'll be. That's the difference. Joe, let it bide a while. She's only a lass. Come on, mate. What's your answer? Hey, excuse me. Good night, sir. Deal with you. Oh, you must trust me. I'll look after you. You do still love me. Oh, yes. Yes, I do. I just want to be with you. You're so beautiful.
morning, sir. I hope you slept well. Like at all. Thank you. How's that ankle? Oh, it's quite better, thank you. You'll be leaving us then. Well, actually, I've been meaning to ask you. I think, in fact, I'll stay on a bit, if I may. I'm so wonderfully peaceful here, and you're all so kind. I've got quite attached to Nick and Rick, you know. I'm sorry, sir, but that won't be convenient. I beg your pardon? The room's let from Friday. But... The gentleman comes here every year, regular. I brought you your bill, sir. I think you'll find it in order. It's a week today since you've been here. That's 14 shillings full board, like I told you. Mr. Garton paid his when he left. Uh, uh, please. I've made no other arrangements. Couldn't I possibly stay till tomorrow? We've anyway? got to get the room turned down. I'm sorry I didn't understand your position before. I really would be very much obliged, Mrs. Darrickham. All right. Friday, then. But early, mind. And that'll be another two shillings. Oh, yes, of course. I think you'd best be getting back to London, sir. We've gone above the market, sir, with Joe. Market's on a Thursday. But you didn't tell me. What happened? Dora packed her off in a mighty hurry. There was words. You mean between Megan and Mrs. Larrikin? Yes, sir. Angry words. Thank you, Jim. Sir. been sulking all day. Well then, I can buy my time. What? You think I'll be waiting for you, don't you? Well, he won't. He most likely gone already. <laughs> you better see some sense, my girl. Megan! Go! Leave Megan alone! Put your hands on her. How dare I? How dare I? Megan is mine. That's why. And I'll lay my hands on you as well. Stop it! My Germanic boy! Leave me be! It is none of your business! When I see a lady being set up by the likes of you, it is my business! <laughs> lady! Listen to him! Lady, he says! No! Oh, stop it! Joe! You've been nothing but trouble since you came here in where you ain't wanted. Well, I tell you, Megan don't want you. None of us wants you. So you get back where you came from, sir. And let's see what the ladies makes of you there. Megan, I must see you. We must talk. He says you're going. Oh, you're not going, are you? To. Your aunt has let the room. Oh, it isn't true. She just wants you away from here. Yes. And I'm going to take you with me. I can't explain now. Meet me by the bridge as soon as you can. I'll wait for you. I'll wait. I said I was going to look at the calf. Don't stay. All right. Then listen. You're coming with me. We're going to London to my mother's. No. Yes. She'll understand. She's a marvelous person. How be can all right. I? Do you want to come with me? I'll die if I can't be with you. All right. Can you trust your friend of Beaches, uh, Betsy? Yes, yes, I can. Good. Tomorrow I'll go to Torquay. I need some money anyway. 
On Saturday, you go over to Beaches as usual, but don't take the boys. Can you do that? Oh, yes, I'll, I'll try. About midday, go up to the rocks on the road to Bovey Tracy. I'll come up from the station and meet you there. Uh, I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what you mean. I mean, I need you. I want you. I, I love you. You do love me, don't you? Oh, yes. But what shall I wear? I'll buy you a dress in Torquay. I'll say you'll come, Megan. Please say you'll come. You haven't thought what you're doing. I've thought of nothing else all day. But what shall I do when I get to London? Soon, perhaps. If you'll have me, we'll be married. Oh, no. You couldn't marry me. You couldn't. I only want to be with you. I could get work. And then when you... Till Saturday. You promise? I promise. You will take care of me. You will. Of course I'll take care of you. Excuse me. Yeah? Where is the bank? On down the quay, on your right. Very good, sir. Can I help you, sir? Yes, I'd like to cash a check, if I may. Certainly, sir. You have an arrangement with us, I take it. An arrangement? No, I'm afraid not. Then perhaps you know someone in Torquay who can vouch for you, sir. No, I know nobody in Torquay, and I'm in urgent need of money. My credit is perfectly good, I assure you. Of course, sir. But unfortunately, it is a strict company rule. There must be an arrangement. Might I suggest that we telegraph our branch in Chelsea, is it? Mm -hmm. On receipt of their reply, we shall, of course, be happy to oblige you, sir. But how long is this going to take? We close at three o'clock, sir. Frank Ashton. Yes, I'm sorry, I... Phil Halliday. St. Petrox, 91. You were a champion boxer. That's right. You captained the first 11. <laughs> you went on to Winchester, didn't you? What about you? <laughs> oh, we... Make way there. We always do. I say, we're causing a bit of a traffic jam here. 
Can I have some lunch, old boy, and beat the brats? No, I'm sorry, I can't. I've, I've got to be at the bank before three. Well, then you've got plenty of time. Oh, come on. You look as though you could do with a square meal. Well, if you're sure, I, I must be back by three. What are you doing in Torquay? My two little sisters have had the measles. Stella and I brought them down here for some sea air. So you're married? Oh, no, 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 no. Stella's another sister. There are dozens. Oh. Oh. What about you? What? Are you married? No. What are all the festivities for? Well, it's Coronation Summer. Of course. Last week, the fleet was in. All the great warships in the bay. Marvellous stuff. Look out. What brings you here? I've been walking on the moors for a few weeks. Yes, I thought you looked a bit rough. I don't know how I recognised you. Bill! Bill, run here! There they are. Look who I found. It's my old school chum, Frank Ashton, lurking about in heavy disguise. Ah. My sister, Stella. Ah, how do you do? Hello. And the brats, Sabina and Frida, known as Fred. Sabina? How do you do, sir? Hello, Fred. Hello. You sit there, old chum. Uh, do forgive me. I feel the most terrible tramp. I've been out on the moors for a couple of weeks. Like a gypsy? How perfectly stunning. No, not like a gypsy, though I may look like one. I've been staying on a farm. Oh, I love the idea of staying on a farm. Isn't the reality rather smelly? <laughs> and who on earth do you talk to? Well, there were people. Yes. But I can't understand a word they say, can you? <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Meg? I've been looking for you. What for? Well, I says to myself, you'd most likely be grieving. Why should I? Well, he's gone, isn't he? I'm not coming back, neither. So what's that to me? Meg? Is that the truth now? You're not grieving? My Meg, my pretty girl. Oh, Joe, leave off now. I've not been good to you, Joe. I've not been kindly. I'd like your forgiveness if I can. I'll forgive you if you name the day. Just name the day, Meg. Let's be done with all this fooling. I'll think on it. When? Well, I'll tell you. Tomorrow. I think you'd better come shrimping with us this afternoon, Ashton. What do you say? No, I'm sorry, I can't. As much as I'd like to. You must. You simply must. That's all there is to it. Sabina, stop it. Mr. Ashton probably has things to do. I'm afraid so. Terribly romantic things like going to the bank, finding a bed for the night. Well, if that's the case, stay here, old chap. That's very kind of you, but I'm afraid a place like this is rather beyond my means at the moment. My dear fellow. And in any case, I have to leave first thing in the morning. Oh. Now, madam, that seems to be all great. Oh. Good afternoon. Have you heard from my bank? Your bank, sir. You sent a telegram this morning. Ashton, Frank Ashton. Ah, oh, yes, sir, of course. Telegram for Ashton. I'm sorry, sir. No reply as yet. So what shall I do? I have a train to catch first thing in the morning. We open at 10 a.m., sir. Next, please. send a telegram to this address. It doesn't make sense. Of course it makes sense. Uh, Betsy Beecher's farm near Whittacombe. That makes sense. Just Betsy.
sake. Yes, for God's sake. If you use bad language to me, I'll call my dad. I, I'm sorry. Have you got the rest of it? Delay, please wait. There's no signature. You can't send it without a signature. Oh, that's absolute nonsense. And if you persist in being so thick headed, I shall call your dad. That's fourpence. But it won't get there today, not out to Widdicombe. But it'll get there in the morning. It might. Though, mind you, it's Saturday. feel a bit of a fraud, you know. Still, I'm glad you decided to stay. I'm only sorry I have to leave first thing in the morning. Are you sure you'll be all right? Right as rain, old chap. We must meet in London. Yes. Yes, of course. It's um, none of my business, old man, but I get the feeling you're worried about something. Now, you mentioned being short of cash. I'd be very happy to lend. <laughs> oh, it. no, no, just a... A temporary mix-up at the bank, thanks all the same. I'm very grateful to you for putting me up. Thanks for the tops. Oh, good grief, Ashton. You probably saved my life. It's a funny thing, you know, thinking you're drowning. They say the whole of your life passes before your eyes. Well, did it? No. <laughs> but there was one thing. A girl at Cambridge. I've even forgotten her name. A pretty little thing. I was dotty about her. And I found myself thanking God that I hadn't... Oh, you know. That I didn't have to feel guilty about her. How do you explain that? I see. Very charming. So you're in love, are you? Desperately. I can't live without her, Phil. God, it's a relief to talk about her. Are you sure you don't mind? No, 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 not at all. You'd understand if you met her. 
She's magical. Wonderful. And you're going to carry her off on your white charger and live happily ever after? You don't believe me? I'm sorry, of course I believe you, but don't you think you ought to give it a bit more thought? You'll be uprooting her from everything she knows. And besides, will she... Will she exactly fit in with your life? Megan loves me. Oh, well, I'm sure she does. But is that enough? It's all that matters. Halliday. We missed you at dinner, Frank. Yes, I'm sorry. I wasn't hungry. I just wanted to say thank you for what you did. It was nothing, really. If you hadn't been there. Do you believe in fate? That things are meant to happen? Not really. I believe in free will. At least I think I do. I'm afraid that means you'll be leaving us of your own free will. Not entirely. I'll say goodbye then. Oh, goodbye, Stella. Goodbye, Frank. you say, and the bank is? Your, your, your Chelsea branch, you sent a telegram yesterday. Chelsea? Ah, uh, that would be London Southwest, would it not? I have a train to catch in 10 minutes, would you please, please see if the telegram has come. There is no telegram, sir. It must be. No telegram. Next, please. Hmm? <laughs> oh, Mr. Ashton. Oh, God for that. Time's the next train for Bobby Tracy. Bobby Tracy, sir? 6.10, which is mighty slow. Doesn't get in till near 9. Then what's the first one in the morning? Oh, that's a Sunday, sir. No trains to Bobby on a Sunday. Me. It's for me. 
Wait. He'll come to death. I know he will. Well, suppose he don't. I'll go and find him. You'll never. He'll come. You'll see. Oh. I told you my witch craft would work. If we'd been driving along that street just half a minute earlier, we might have missed it. I timed it exactly. Thank you, Sabina. What was it anyway that was so terribly important? Have you got a lady love? Frida, be quiet. <laughs> Have you, Frank? Have you got a lady love? That's rather personal. <laughs> it's none of your business. You must have gone five, Meg. He won't be coming now. He said to wait, so I'm waiting. Oh, you don't have to stay if you don't want to. How about going out with dinner? Say so I went for a walk. Yeah. So you don't know where I am. And Betsy, when he comes, I'll be down for the trap. You'll be ready. you decided not to go after all? I'm afraid I didn't decide. I just missed the train. Then, if it wasn't of your own free will, it must have been Providence. Or, or Sabina's witchcraft. Perhaps it is all Providence. Fate. Whatever you call it. I think we should be getting back, don't oh, you? Oh, no! No one can hear the band! I want to stay with my work! Can I have an ice cream? I'll take you to hear the band, but that's all. Come on, Stella! Come on! What's the trouble, old chap? Something gone wrong? No! <clears throat> well, I missed the dash train. And the next one's at ten past six. We'll miss that too unless we leave this minute. Stella! No, I don't want to spoil that day. Do you want to catch that train, or don't you? It doesn't get there until after nine. It'll be dark. Oh, I should have gone home. Can't be helped. There's one that is pure as an angel and fair as the flowers of May. They call her the gentle maiden wherever she takes her way. Her eyes have the of sunlight as it brightens the blue sea way and more than the deep sea treasure the love of her heart I crave
Captain. Sorry, ma'am. want to come to church, did you? Not much. Why did you then? Well, you know what Lord Tennyson says. Yet all experience is an arch where... Stella's always reading Lord Tennyson. She reads him in bed at night. Does she indeed? Girls, this way. I understand you like tennis. I suspect that you don't like church. Well, I'm not really a believer, if that's what you mean. If you don't believe in anything, what makes you be kind to people? Why don't you just behave like an animal? Because I'm not an animal. Neither are you. We're civilized, thank God. There you are, thank God. You do believe, really. <laughs> no, no. I believe in being good because to be good is good itself. And sometimes I fail horribly. Why are you sorry when you fail? It makes you want forgiveness. I'm sorry when I make mistakes. That's human. As for forgiveness, Friend. Terribly sorry. I have to take it back to the hotel. What's the matter? What is it? I, I quite forgot. I have, have to meet someone. Aren't you coming to lunch? Oh, yes, of course. I've quite slipped my mind. Do forgive me. And tell, tell Phil I shan't be long. Thank you, Stella. But Frank!
18 years later. Why had I come back? To try somehow to recapture a moment of hope and innocence. Desperately longing for her forgiveness. For some sort of miracle. Where was she now? The girl that I'd wronged so cruelly. Good afternoon. Is that your motor up in the road, sir? That's right. We don't get many of them in these parts. Just touring round, are you? Yes, I saw the farm. It's rather beautiful. Oh, aye. It is that. Forty-odd year I've been there now. Seen some changes, I can tell you. Uh-huh. Three sons there were. Fine lads. Now there's only young Rick and the boy and myself. Were you in the war, sir? Yes, sir, I was. And uh, the woman taking in the washing? Oh, aye. That'll be Joe's wife. I should say, widow. I see. Well, thank you. You never before, have you, sir? No, I don't think so. That'll be young Francis after the fox. Fine shot, young Francis. I'm afraid I must go now. Not yet, sir. I got something to show you. You know what this is? This be a graph, sir. Just a young girl, she was. Megan David. What happened then? Well, she fell in love with one of the young college gentlemen staying at the bar. Nice fellow, too, with his head in the air. Or so we thought. He took off sudden one morning, and she went out of him. She were a plucky lass. Maybe it were two days. We never knew where she was. Then one evening, she were back. I never saw a human creature that changed in my life. Never. We'd often see her waiting by the bridge for him, staring at the track. Like a lost soul, she were. It weren't long before we all knew why. She were taken to a bed that February, though she'd reckoned on Easter. Three days it took, and four nights. She never even saw the bed. We led her to rest up here on the moor. The poor loving hearted girl. Meg's last wish. 
Victoria, she first saw the young gentleman. She wanted to look... to lie up here by the road for when he should come back for her. What happened to the child? Oh, he's a fine boy, sir. What was his name? He were baptized Francis. It's what Mac wanted. Frank! You've got children of your own by now, Mr. Ashton. No. No children. Frank! Where are you? Oh, there you are. Didn't you hear me calling? I finished my sketch and I'm absolutely starving. I thought you were going to bring the picnic down. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh. Well, it's too late now. I suppose we'd better go on to Torquay. Goodbye, Jim. I'm ready. Yes, dear, coming. 